Intel has been the biggest name in processor production for many, many years, but recently they've started to lose the race to not only their main rival AMD, but to some new names in the game like Qualcomm, Samsung, and even Apple. While there's a lot that's happened over the years that we can't get into in such a short video like this, let's quickly go over some history of Intel's battle with AMD for the PC market. For many years, AMD CPUs were once seen as inferior compared to Intel's, so they started investing their resources trying to catch up while building their own tech into their CPUs. And in 2003, AMD released their heavy hitter Athlon 64-bit CPUs, which for the first time were superior to Intel's offerings at the time, with AMD putting a big focus on gaming. Intel rushed to catch up on 64-bit CPUs, and it wasn't until 2006 when they released their Core 2 Duo processor, their first dual-core processors that destroyed the mainstream CPUs AMD was offering. And shortly after, AMD started producing their Athlon X2 dual-core processors, and then they would both venture into quad-core and beyond. And while all this was happening, PC gaming was starting to get really popular, and a lot of gamers had to decide between a mainstream Intel processor or a more budget-friendly AMD CPU. Being in my early teens back then, I went with AMD's Phenom 2 955 Black Edition quad-core processor that I was able to overclock and run some of my favorite games. And while AMD was focusing on putting out more cores, Intel decided to mostly stick with quad-core processors for many years, enjoying the bulk of the market share and providing a wide range of processors for companies like Apple, all the way from low-end chips to high-end Xeon server chips. In the meantime, there were some new players entering the game. In 2011, ARM Holdings announced their first 64-bit mobile chips, and in 2013, Apple announced the iPhone 5S, the first 64-bit smartphone packing their own A7 chip. And with smartphones becoming increasingly more popular, Apple and Android smartphone makers continued to fight to create the fastest mobile processors for our phones, but no one was expecting mobile chip performance to grow so quickly. We'll dig deeper into that in just a minute. With AMD being the runner-up to Intel, they never stopped pushing for newer tech that could finally disrupt Intel's market share streak, and in 2017, this happened. Take a look at our Ryzen product. This is one of the first off of the manufacturing line with an incredible amount of horsepower under the hood. AMD released their first line of Ryzen 7 processors, offering very impressive performance for much less cash than Intel's competing chips. While this was happening, Intel was already in trouble, having a very hard time moving their 10 nanometer process. In fact, in 2013, Intel claimed it could produce 10 nanometer chips by 2015. Then they changed it to 2016, then to late 2017, and then late 2019. And here we are in 2019, and we're finally starting to see some mainstream 10 nanometer chips, which we'll get into in just a moment. So what was Intel's response to AMD announcing Ryzen? They brought hyperthreading to their i5 and they continued to squeeze out every bit of performance they could out of their 14 nanometer process while beginning to finally lower their prices to be able to compete with AMD. And at the same time, AMD was going full force with their Ryzen and Threadripper processors, continuing to improve performance while reducing processor costs compared to Intel's offerings. In 2018, AMD was the best performing stock on the S&P 500, and in the past year, it's basically doubled in value, gaining a lot of attention from mass media and consumers. Around a month ago, AMD revealed the spec of their upcoming 7 nanometer Zen 2 processors at Computex 2019 with performance that completely destroys everything that Intel has to offer and being lower priced. And just a few days ago, the world's first 7 nanometer Zen 2 desktop CPUs from AMD are now available to purchase. Shortly after that, that, an internal Intel memo was leaked, admitting that AMD's new Zen 2 processors will offer great performance results with prices that are significantly below Intel's, offering good performance per dollar. However, Intel also announced their new 10 nanometer Ice Lake processors at Computex 2019, and they're packing more performance and a lot of new technology, like integrated Thunderbolt 3. Their 10 nanometer chips are coming to thin laptops and tablets first, like Dell's 2019 XPS 13 2 in 1, which should be coming soon. Unfortunately, it may be already too late for Intel. They've been behind for a couple of years now, giving AMD a chance to swipe up some market share, especially since Intel processors have been experiencing some major security issues with the recent Spectre and Meltdown vulnerabilities. Intel is going to have to come back strong in the years to come to compete with AMD, but I haven't even talked about their relationship with Apple and how they could be losing their business very soon. As many of you know, Apple's MacBook Pros have been experiencing thermal issues in the recent years, and here's why. 
While Intel was promising that their more efficient 10 nanometer processors would be coming soon, Apple was working on their 2016 redesign of the MacBook Pro, making it as thin as they could possibly make it while packing awesome performance. Unfortunately, Intel's 10 nanometer processors weren't ready for the initial 2016 release of the MacBook Pro, so Apple had to stick with Intel's old 14 nanometer processors, which were refined for the time being. But Apple and their MacBook Pro's thin and very limited cooling systems weren't expecting Intel to delay 10 nanometer for so long. And when Intel started to increase core count to keep up with AMD's Ryzen processors, the MacBook Pro started to throttle, really bad, especially with the last year's Intel 6-core i9 processor. This has caused Apple some very bad press coverage, pushing users to believe that MacBook Pros can't handle the heat of Intel's latest processors. In the meantime, Apple's mobile ARM chips have been getting faster and faster every year, especially since the release of their 2018 iPad Pro, packing their A12X processor, which had performance that surpassed 92% of all laptops, tablets, and convertible PCs sold before its release. So the question a lot of people have is, why not just switch to these ARM processors and ditch Intel? Well, that's exactly what Apple's been working on. They started the process by creating their T2 chip, which takes over a lot of processors that Intel processors used to do, and they've been working on making it easier to pour iOS software over to the Mac, which will in turn make it easier for an ARM processor to run macOS. When this happens, it'll become cheaper for Apple to produce their Macs, and Intel will slowly start to lose Apple's business. And that's not the worst part. Other companies will follow in Apple's footsteps and start replacing Intel processors with ARM chips. Their only chance will be to step up their game and make processors that can compete with AMD and these up and coming powerful ARM chips. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to tap that like button and click that circle above to subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. This has been Max with Max Tech, and we'll see you in the next video.